Growing up, I started dancing and swimming when I was about four. And my goal was always to um, be a dancer. I wanted to be, you know, on Broadway or whatever. And my high school was 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So I was an avid swimmer. I made my high school team as a ninth grader. I would walk up to the high school and practice or whatever. And on Saturdays, we had swim practice from 7 to 11 in the morning. Afterwards, my coach always believed in giving back to the community. So at 11.30, we did a swim for recreational kids. So we would be volunteers. And the first time I ever worked with a student with a disability in the pool made me change my mind to want to be a teacher. When you were a student, who was your favorite teacher and what made them special? Okay, it was when I was in junior high, when they used to call it junior high school and not middle school. <laughs> um, he was my algebra teacher and he was the wrestling coach. And my brothers were big wrestlers, so I was a statistician for the wrestling team. But I just enjoyed his class, and I think because we had a lot to talk about with wrestling and everything, I just made a connection with him. And even to this day, when I would see him in church, I would always say, you're the reason why I went to school to be a teacher. Uh, share your te teaching experience. What grades or subjects did you teach? So when I first started out, I was... Um, a life skills teacher up in Clarion County and I started the first public high school class for students with significant disabilities and I was there for four years and then I met somebody and wanted to move back to the Pittsburgh area and applied here and got my job here but when they hired me here I was English because I was certified in secondary English and special education so I taught English here co-taught, had my own classes and different things like that. My own classes were students with um, learning disabilities, but then I co-taught with the English department. And then right before, when the pandemic hit, Dr. Hauer and Dr. Mahoney thought that it would be good that I went back into the life skills classroom because our teacher was retiring because of the pandemic and thought, well, who better to put in there but Michelle? So that's, I ended up in the life skills classroom at the end of my career. Tell me about your favorite lesson, unit, or activity that you enjoyed teaching over the years. So as an English teacher, I always enjoyed American Lit and like the Crucible and Fences and things like that because it just, it brought history and to the kids and it, it was kind of real for them. As a life skills teacher, I enjoyed teaching a unit on just life and getting ready and doing like a portfolio and learning their strengths and needs and then looking at jobs, what would they be good at, what kind of education would they need past high school and things like that. What was the funniest or most entertaining moment you remember from your years in the classroom? There's many. Some are probably not appropriate for, <laughs> for the camera. Um, one that I remember during the pandemic, uh, when I would do Zoom with my students, I would always go, oh, let me grab my handy dandy pencil, and I would pull the pencil down and write whatever on the screen so the kids could see it virtually. And when we came back in the fall of 2021, my one student um, brought me in a gift. And here his mom and him had found a toy handy dandy notebook. And it just, I, I don't know, it's just, it was very nice and very, it was funny at the time too because I was always calling everything a handy dandy pencil or a handy dandy whatever. And he saw that and wanted to bring it in and it was just funny, I thought. Was it challenging to like make the switch like from like in person to virtual whenever the pandemic like hit? At the time because of the fact that I was a life skills teacher, it was difficult because some of them struggled. But I, I thought that that time period for them was the best for them because it made them so independent. They had to learn to get up in the morning. They had to learn to log on to their computer. They had to learn how to email me papers or whatever. So um, I think at first it was a little rough, but it, it worked out. How have advances in technology such as the internet and smartphones impacted teaching during your career? In most sense, it was positive because you were able to bring in more um, exciting things to your lesson that would add to help with um, multi-intelligences and different things like that. I think the one bad thing was that kids are always in their phone <laughs> and it's hard to get them to refocus on the lesson. 
but overall, I think it was a good thing, technology. How, how did you handle challenging or disruptive students, disruptive students in a way that turned their behavior around? With me, I, I get very personal with my students. I want to know what's going on in their life, and because and, a lot of stress is outside of the classroom, come into the classroom. And if you are, for example, I had a student who was a top student, played football and everything. He had a, a reading disability. And his grades were really good. He was planning on going to college, and all of a sudden it plummeted. And teachers are like, I don't, I can't understand what's going on, what's going on. So uh, because of my relationship with him, I was able to learn that his parents were going through a divorce and they wanted him to choose and he couldn't choose so he was living out of his car. And so it's like if you don't get to know that side of your student, then you can't make that connection with them. And I think that's how I handled students that were disruptive because I had a different connection with them. Yeah, so kind of just like one-to-one -one asking them about what's yeah, going on. Yeah, like a personal. Yeah. Like I would, I remember driving, it was pouring down rain, and there were two students who stayed after school because they got in trouble, <laughs> and they didn't have parents that had cars, so they missed the bus or whatever, and they're sitting there, and it's pouring down rain, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, we can't walk home now. We'll get drenched. They live down in Sharpsburg. So I was like, all right, I'm not supposed to do this, but get in the car, <laughs> I'm going to drive you home. Because I couldn't let them walk. And the, I don't know how long they would have sat there. I don't think the mom said that they could get them until 5. I'm like, who wants to sit there from 3.30 to 5 o'clock? You know what I mean? Yeah. So. so you spent decades working with young people. What did, you, what did you learn from the students you worked with? Like, what did they teach you? Not to sweat the small stuff. And to be strong in adversity. Because there, you know, everybody has a different story. And you can't get all uptight about that kind of stuff. And I think kids are so resilient that they let things flow and they figure it'll work out. So that's what I think I learned the most from students is how to just let it work itself out. What are the most important qualities of a great educator? I think compassion is important or empathy, compassion and flexibility, adaptability, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's what's happening in somebody's life or even just what's happening in the building. Like we could have a lockdown. You have to be flexible. You can't get all uptight about something that you have no control over. What was the most challenging part of being a teacher? Being able to reach every kid and making sure that when they walked out that door, it's going to make me cry, when they walked out that door, that they learn something that they will keep with them forever. They will make them a better person. And what was the most rewarding part of being a teacher? Seeing their successes, watching them walk across the stage at graduation, or even just, I remember this one student who struggled academically and couldn't understand why I would teach him English or, or poetry or anything like that. And I'd be like, listen, you're going to be watching Jeopardy one day with your friends, and they're going to ask a question, and you're going to know it. And you know why you're going to know it? Because Fisher's going to have told you. And, um, or you learned it from me or whatever. And he's like, this is, I can't do this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, so this was right around 9-11. And they had a huge um, memorial for firefighters in honor of the New York firefighters. And um, I remember trying to teach him rhyme scheme and just understanding poetry and everything. And he, he had the day off because he went to the memorial. He came back the next day running into my classroom with this program that they had, and on the back side of it was a poem about firefighters. And he said to me, I get it now, I understand it. Rhyme scheme was A-A-B, and he goes, and I understood the poem. And to this day, I still have that thing that he gave me, and I was like, that's, that's what teaching is all about. If you can give one piece of advice to parents and the general public about the importance of teachers and education, what would it be? It would be to trust your educators. You know, you have a school board and you have administrators and you have parents who hire teachers, but then they question teachers. And they have to know and trust in who they hired and know that we're doing what's best for their child. And I think that would be just trust your educators. What advice would you offer to a first year teacher? 
like someone less than one year of teaching experience? Don't be afraid to ask questions. We don't know everything, and you need to be able to ask those questions. I always tell my students the only dumb question is the unasked question. So I would say that to new teachers. If you think it's a dumb question, it doesn't matter. If you don't know it, then you need to ask. And also, the dollar store is your, your best friend, should be your best friend, because you can buy all kinds of supplies there for dirt cheap. <laughs> What would you like to say to your former students who are watching this? That I miss their smiling faces every day.